In this video we will see how to create nice foldings and especially how to uh, control foldings uh, based on spline, uh, spline lines and what we can see is here a two-dimensional uh, surface based on spline lines and we will look at how to do this in the next minutes. Okay, let's start. Um, we start with a simple line and uh, here I choose under shapes my line tool. I go to Bezier and this time uh, I switch on my uh, snap toggle, white mouse click, uh, grid points which I normally don't use so often but I just use it now to draw um, a simple and smooth line. Okay, I set my first vertex point and uh, here my second vertex point, third vertex point, fourth vertex point, and um, so on until I do a line like this. And this is my starting point. I deselect my snap toggle. I want to see this in uh, all my viewports, front view, top view. And what I do next is I hold my shift key and move this line up and then choose uh, a number of copies. I go to four and here's the amount of uh, spline lines I created. Okay, these are out of these spline lines I would like to create uh, a folded surface and uh, First we look at uh, the spline lines and uh, I would like to turn every second spline, spline line, I would like to mirror every second spline line. I go into the mirror tool and I choose uh, uh, direction to mirror this. I go to Z direction to mirror it the other way around and uh, the same I will do with uh, this, uh, the third, third line and my um, in my array and uh, what I have right now is I have four spline lines piled on each other and uh, two are just turned around or are probably mirrored. Out of these lines I would like to create a surface and before I can do this I will do this uh, actually with a cross section modifier I have to attach these surfaces so I choose my first one I go into modify and then attach. I can attach every single line. I can also go to attach multi and select all my other four lines. And now all four or five lines are a part of one big, uh, one big shape. Okay, to, under uh, to understand the function cross section properly, uh, you have to understand one thing uh, thing about vertex points. Um, I select this um, hierarchy vertex points and you can see all the vertex points and you can see at the end of the line, actually uh, it's the beginning, you can see a yellow vertex. This means this is vertex point number one and I can show uh, I can show the vertex uh, numbers in my viewport. I go in the sub uh, sub menu uh, selection to uh, display show vertex numbers, and here you can see that these vertex numbers uh, uh, every vertex has a number one two three four five until nine, and number uh, n number one is on top of each other, and number two, and so on and so on. Okay. I choose these two splines and I move these two splines a little bit to um, to the left and uh, that's it and the next step we will see how to create a three-dimensional surface out of this. Okay, there's one modifier which is really handy. This is a cross-section modifier. I just attached this cross-section modifier and what you can see right now, um, I zoom out a little bit. If I go again uh, under the hierarchy vertex and uh, switch my show end result toggle on, I can see that the numbers are uh, connected. 
can see that number uh, one is connected to number one, number two is connected to number two. And this is really important to uh, see because uh, that's the only way that your 3D model is not muddled up. Okay, so far I can't see a surface. For the surface I have to add another modifier, actually the surface modifier. And if I add uh, the surface modifier, oops, then this is something we definitely don't want to see in a video tutorial, but uh, I think it's good to learn out of this because there's one problem. Uh, which is uh, not the order of the vertex points. The order of the vertex points uh, I can see. One, 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 one. That's fine. And here are all my nines. Uh, no, it's uh, the order of the splines. If I choose uh, this spline, it shows me this is spline number one. Uh, this is number five, four, three, and two. And this just means that this spline has to go up. Okay, and then we have the right order, and if I then go to my uh, um, to my surface modifier, then it looks exactly the way I wanted it, it to be. The nice thing about this method is that you still have full control over your design, and you can probably say that these splines are related to a height of your design. You can um, uh, adjusted the way you want it to be. Okay, we already saw what's uh, what's happening if uh, the splines are not in the right order. The vertex points were in the order, right order, uh, but uh, I choose the vertex points uh, again. I go to vertex points and uh, show end result toggle off. And what I can do is actually I can choose uh, the last vertex point and say make it to make it first. I go I also choose this one and uh, go to make first and we see what's happening. I don't expect much actually. Uh, what you can see is that the whole thing is completely messed up because it's just uh, twisted and this is something really important if you use um, uh, the cross-section modifier that uh, it connects uh, the numbers of the vertices also in relation to the number of the splines and if you make any mistake in this direction it will never look good. The nice thing about this method is that you still have full control over vertex points and over your splines and uh, what we do next is we just select uh, vertex points for example every second row and uh, we uh, go under the quad menu, right mouse point, we change them from smooth uh, vertex points to corner vertex points. And what you see in uh, next step is that there is a smooth transition from, from uh, a line with uh, hard, uh, hard edges to a really smooth uh, line. Uh, and uh, so you have absolutely good control about the whole thing and uh, can change every vertex point the, wa uh, the way you would like to have it. Okay, I finally would like to give this whole uh, shape some thickness and if we just take the shell modifier then it doesn't look such great because you can see it's a little bit twisted here around uh, here at the edges and uh, the bigger the amount is, the, the worse it's get. Even if you if you use uh, straightened corners, it doesn't make a big difference. There's one trick you can do, you can make. Uh, I just uh, select my shape and uh, I hold my shift key and move it a little bit and means uh, I um, produce a copy. And what I then can do is I can just um, attach um, edit poly. You can already see there's a really strong tessellation and this is related to my uh, to my surface uh, modifier which uh, has a lot of steps. I adjusted it like this. Um, I can then go uh, and uh, attach it to, uh, to the other one and there's one thing you have to be aware of. 
uh, right now all normals move into the same direction it means uh, both move into this direction this is something I would like to change so I go to uh, I choose my modifier normal I drop it under edit poly and now I can um, go to attach and attach uh, this surface both surfaces are attached I can go into border and choose uh, the border around the first uh, line and then the border about the second uh, surface and uh, use next step one modifier means uh, the modifier bridge and you can see that it automatically closes my uh, uh, my both uh, faces my both um, uh, surfaces and uh, that's a much better way in this uh, with this uh, more complex surface than using uh, the sh uh, shell function. We have a quick look how this method works with uh, closed splines. I go to create, I just uh, choose one closed spline. I choose this uh, hexagon, n-gon and right mouse click I convert it to editable spline and I would like to away this thing a little bit. I go to away and choose account uh, 10 as uh, fine preview set a little bit uh, the direction of uh, the y direction okay I would use it a little bit so it's uh, easier to uh, control I can uh, rotate it in uh, several directions I would like to wait to rotate it around uh, y direction and uh, I can also scale it make it a little bit bigger or make it a little bit smaller uh, that's good enough. Okay, this is my shape, slightly distorted in uh, several directions. And uh, I do the same like before, uh, I go to editable spline and uh, then under attach, I see one thing. Uh, so attach multi, there's nothing to attach. And the reason is uh, I use this array function as um, not as copy but um, as instances that's very important you can't uh, then attach objects so minimum one has to be unique I choose one and say unique and then I go to attach multi and select all string A all the other uh, angons like before okay what I learned from last time is that I should definitely check uh, the order of my angons beforehand one two three I can see it here in my menu four five six seven eight this looks really good I go uh, into spline and I go to show vertex the first thing I see is that uh, my first vertex point they're all more or less on top of each other so I expect no mistakes and I think this already looks really good Important is that uh, there's only one first um, first spline, so one yellow spline, and then you have the same amount of uh, vertex points for every spline. Okay, next step, um, I will attach my cross section modifier, and uh, so far we don't um, uh, we don't have. Um, an object there's still uh, splines. Uh, next thing I have to do is I have to add my um, surface modifier and we can already see that this looks like a uh, quite nice surface. So far there are not many classical folding uh, structures so I just uh, choose uh, my splines every second spline and I start to rotate them again probably also uh, turn them a little bit and look at my uh, surface again uh, it still looks really smooth and this is related to the amount of steps I used 
And uh, what I have to do here next, I can uh, add my edit poly. And under edit poly, I go to um, property hard. And you can see that uh, with this settings, I have folded my uh, object already quite nicely in a really, really simple way. It's still open at the top and at the bottom. This is related to my uh, to my splines. What I can do is, uh, for example, I can just use um, the modifier cap holes and see what this does actually. And you can see that it just closes my um, uh, my bottom and my top. And uh, I can still go to uh, editable spline and change uh, my splines. I can uh, start uh, tilting them and uh, start playing a little bit with my uh, with my folding structure and uh, still have really good control about this whole shape.